start this video by talking about the new Ghost design. So every part of this car is completely new. Nothing is carried over from the old Ghost and it's bigger than before as well. So it's slightly wider. In fact, at its widest point, it's almost two meters wide. The hair at the back, they have tapered it in so it doesn't have a big bulbous bottom. The back end is quite plain looking, but in places it is lifted by plenty of chrome like here and around the tail lights and chrome surrounds for the exhaust. And I use the car wire sticker truth to just illustrate that within there are two proper exhaust pipes on each side. Moving down the side, we come to the alloy wheels. So they start at 19 inches, which is way too small for this car. These are the top size, the 21 inches. And I think at the very least, you've got to have these fitted. Otherwise it'll just look under wheeled. This car has a very strong shoulder line, gives it plenty of presence from the side. And once again, we've got chrome just highlighting it so it isn't just a big slab of black and huge chrome door handles, which are in the middle of the car because obviously look, you've got rear hinged rear doors, makes it dead easy to get in. We'll come to the interior in a moment. I mean, it's a lovely looking interior, isn't it? Just shut the doors, which is done electrically. Go on. Now this car's length, five and a half meters but you can get an extended version, which is even longer. It's 170 millimeters longer. Now here's the controversial bit, the front. I think it looks quite a bit more aggressive than the old Ghost. Here's a picture of the old Ghost. What do you think? I think I prefer the look of the old one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You know, I said that every panel's new. There is one thing that isn't, is the spirit of ecstasy. She's the same, but the grill's new. But thankfully, listen, the car wire stick of truth, it's metal. If this was a Bentley, That'd be fake metal, it'd be plastic. But no, not on the rolls. You can literally mince any pedestrians that you do hit. Don't worry, that's not scratching it. The car wow stick of tunes this time. Anyway, stone looking car with a very interesting number plate. I don't think it's an accident that it has CFO in it. Let's see if it's suitable for CFO on the inside. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then some. <laughs> Oh, I can't quite reach the door. It's all right, got a button that closes it for me. Mm. The inside of this is gorgeous. The quality of the materials is impeccable. The leather is just so soft. The stitching, even though it's done by hand, is just so straight. The wood veneers, they're solid and thick. This one has a unique detail in it. It's like shiny flex, it's gorgeous. And everything that looks like metal is metal they're solid it just feels wonderful this is solid as well i like this metal strip here on the top of the grab handle for the door even the door pockets look they're lined with leather contrasting leather as well the orange to match this on the dash it's fabulous i like the dials as well they're behind this glass screen and they're part normal physical dials so the outer ring and the little illuminated bits for the increments of speed but then the actual dial itself and the needle is digital but it looks old-fashioned and analog it's great infotainment system it's basically bmw's iDrive because bmw owns rolls royce but with a rolls royce understated font on it it's easy to use you can use the swivel wheel or you can use it as a touch screen as well this thing is just glorious to sit in and it's impossible to find anything to complain about apart from one thing these stalks for the indicators and the windscreen wipers and the electrical operation of the steering wheel does just feel not cheap, but like normal car-ish. And I found another thing as well, a little bit of a crease in this bit of leather. It's the only imperfection I can find. It's as if this particular cow spent its time like leaning up the fence. Other than that though, everything is gorgeous and the carpets are gorgeous. They're so thick. It's like I'm stroking a <laughs> lamb. Stop stroking the carpet, Matt, and carry on with the review. Everything though is dead easy to use. It's not just like form over functions. Your climate control, you've got these dials. It doesn't actually have a temperature on it. You just have a sliding scale, but it's easy to get the temperature you want. All the buttons for like your heated seat and your ventilated seat, they're nice and easy to use. You're not faffing around in a menu. Then you've got your buttons for your shortcut on the infotainment system here, but also for your radio stations, dead easy. You want to let air in and out of the air vents, you pull the organ stops. The steering wheel, it looks like a piece of of artwork yet there are still buttons on it but they're they're just blended in nicely it's a great great job and there's some practicality in here as well look Ooh, look you do have a glove box and it's lined with felt and even that handle is metal it feels great in fact look even the little speakers around for your bluetooth 
that's metal. This is metal and this is leather, your grab handle. This lighting here is like something you'd find in Claridge's hotel. And the seats, the seats are like huge armchairs. Obviously they are electrically operated and almost infinitely adjustable. You could spend hours in these seats. In fact, I might just spend the rest of the day in them. Go carry on with the review, have nine. So let's continue with the cubby spaces because underneath here, there is a little bit of space. Look how that's where I keep my mask. Oh, look at USB-C. Rolls-Royce weren't lying that this is aimed at the younger generation. And you've got a little 12 volt socket there. Under here, I don't know, you can probably fit a mobile phone like that. And underneath here, you have some cup holders which seem gilded. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can fit. Look, see, I've got a BMW flask, so it's not quite Rolls Royce, but at least it's the same group. And those door bins that I've already mentioned, they're nice and big. This place is glorious. But if you think it's good here in the front, you can't check out the back. Right. <laughs> Look at this. Mm -mm -mm. So, as I said at the beginning, this isn't the long wheelbase version, but. Look, I've got absolutely loads of knee room. I don't know why you'd need the extended wheelbase version. It really doesn't need to be any longer. That's what she said. Very good. Now the opulence just continues in the back. So once again, the air vents around solid metal, lovely with your organ stops. You've got your climate control here as well. It's just gorgeous and all the materials are super expensive feeling, thick carpet. You can really relax. Even if you're tall, you're going to be fine for headroom. And you can get this car as a two seater in the back. This actually has a three seater configuration, which means that if you really needed to, you could squeeze someone into the middle seat, which would be very un Rolls Royce. Hmm. <laughs> Even the storage folders on the back of the seats just feel so expensive. And I like this feature as well. There's a little grab handle in the back of the front seat so you can actually hold on when you're getting into the car. It's like they thought of everything. Now, Rolls-Royce has given me this spec sheet here, which is in a leather binder, much posher than the spec sheets you get from other manufacturers. And it's listed out all the options on the car only it doesn't give the individual prices of the options instead i just get a total price for the cards including options is just over three hundred and seven thousand pounds but that excludes taxes when you add in vat for this country it means that here this rolls royce goes will cost almost three hundred and seventy thousand pounds now i asked rolls royce about this for the individual option prices but they said no we don't like to talk about that very Rolls Royce. Anyway, we will talk about some of the options. So, one thing this car has is the embossed Spirit of Ecstasy on the back of the picnic tables. It also has, check it out, the rear entertainment system. So you get a big screen on each side and you can control all the car's infotainment through this rear screen and you can do it using the controller under here, which is just like that in the front. I'll just put that away and I'll put this away. Put that away. Don't know why it can't all be on one button. The rear seats in this car also have a massage function. That's one of the optional extras. What's it doing now? What's it doing now? I'll press that button to make it go upright. No, I don't want that. Another optional extra are these lovely Rolls Royce embossed pillows. Mm. Another extra this car has is this. Look, in here we have a fridge and I really like what they've done with this. Normally the fridges you have in cars go in lengthways, which eat into boot space, whereas this one it holds the bottle, obviously it's not going to be this kind of bottle, it'll be champagne, vertically. And then you have your little champagne glasses, and I, by the way they're held in by expensive feeling clips. Hmm. I would sip from one of these, but I can't risk it because of Covid, of course. Good old Covid. Good old Rolls Royce for providing all the luxury that we require. Let's see what other options we've got. Oh, look, the curtains. Now, you don't just get normal blinds in a Rolls Royce, you have actual curtains. So look. And then the one for the back window. That reminds me of the old cinemas from back in the day, you know, when they used to, when the curtains come back so you could get and watch the film. What else we got? Oh yeah, effortless doors. So watch this, right? To open the rear doors, you go like, you hold them open a bit, and then you just pour onto the handle. And then it opens using a motor. It's actually got a little gyroscope in that. So even if you're on a, an incline or a decline, it can actually control the door and the speed at which it opens. So it doesn't suddenly just fling open or go too slowly. Ah, the Phantom doesn't have that. It doesn't have the facility to actually open the door, but you do have to hold on to it for safety reasons. Obviously, you can't just have it flinging open because you could have a cyclist coming the other way and then you'd be involved in a lawsuit. You actually have to have a human controlling the door. 
you know, let's have a human controlling the boot. See how big that is. Like anyone cares, but let's do it anyway. It's part of the review. So the low capacity is 507 litres, which is quite a lot, but you do get even more boot space on the Rolls-Royce Phantom. If you want to see my four in depth video review of that car, just click on the pop-out banner up there. But let's continue with this slightly smaller ghost boot. Oh, it's nicely trimmed, luxurious carpet, which is nicer than in my flat. And this scuff plate here, so you don't damage your paintwork when you're lifting things in and out. The opening is quite wide, which is handy, because I'm gonna have to climb in here to search for some useful features in the boot. Where are they? We've got a 12 volt socket anywhere. Any tie down hooks? Anything? Anything? No, nothing. That's your lot, really. Hmm. And that brings you on to five annoying things. No, sorry, this is a Rolls Royce. Five trifling matters about the Rolls Royce Ghost. Let me out. Oh, wait, there's a special release here. Shall I pull that? Yes. Hee hee. The fan for the ventilation system is a little bit louder than you might imagine it should be on a Rolls Royce. You'd think they'd be able to engineer it to be completely silent, but it's not. Listen. Hmm, I'm so rich that I prefer to be blown silently. I don't know why they have this keyhole here on the side of the car. I guess it's there for in case the central locking breaks, then you can get in, but surely they should have been able to like hide it so it doesn't look so ghastly. This part of the rear blind system is actually manually operated, so it's really annoying if you're the driver and you're trying to look over your shoulder and you want to be able to see out. You have to sort of like do that kind of thing with it. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? While there's Apple CarPlay for the infotainment system, there is no Android Auto. Now, you might be thinking, well, of course not, man. Do you? Because anyone who buys a Rolls Royce will pay the extra for an Apple phone. Well, maybe, but their poorly paid chauffeur may have an Android phone. So what are they going to do? The satellite navigation system could do with being a little bit more sensible. So I put it in the fastest route and it directed me to this location by some tiny single track roads, which are an absolute nightmare to drive this two metre wide car down. It was horrendous. It should know just how wide this car is. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. You can get a starlight headliner. We've got hundreds of LEDs just in the roof lining, which mimic a night sky. And if you wait long enough, you'll see the occasional shooting star. I'm just not sure if I've got the patience right now. No, I haven't. So much work has been done on this car to make it as quiet as possible. Look how thick the double glazing is on the windows. Now, on top of that, you've got 100 kilos of soundproofing material throughout the car's cabin. There's even soundproofing within the tires. But Rolls went one step further. It actually measured the sound frequency resonance of all the components of the car and made sure they matched up so that you don't get slightly different sounds standing out within the car. They did this for like the boot, the foot wells, just almost every single part of the car. In fact, they got to one stage where they made it too quiet that it made passengers feel a little bit car sick because you didn't get the sensation that you were actually moving. So they dulled a little bit of sound back in to keep everyone nice and comfortable. You can raise and lower the spirit of ecstasy manually if you want to by pressing a button on the car's infotainment system. And you can actually get it in solid silver or gold plated. They might be thinking, wait a minute, someone will try to steal it, won't they? What are you going to do? Well, let's just pretend I'm a thief and I'm going, oh, I'd like that on my Mazda MX-5. I think I'm having that away. Oh dear, it's gone. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can actually watch my video review of my own Mazda MX-5 on my personal YouTube channel, Matt Watson Cars. Go check it out. The centre caps for the wheels always stay upright, even when you're driving along. Go have a look. Reason being that you can't have the Rolls-Royce logo upside down. Oh no! How wonderful is that? See this Ghost logo here? Now, Rolls-Royce could have just painted that on, but that would have been too easy. Instead, they took 10,000 man-hours designing and developing this very special feature, which actually involves 90,000 laser-etched holes in this wooden veneer. And behind that, you've got 152 LEDs, and it shines light through evenly. So you get this starlight effect here. And when you turn the car off, it completely disappears, and it comes back when you turn it back on again. And depending on where you look at it from, it seems to twinkle. There's actually 850 stars in the Rolls-Royce Ghost Galaxy. And there's one billion galaxies in the Rolls-Royce Universe. Professor Brown Cox, by the way. 
This car is the upgraded bespoke audio system. So you have 18 speakers and these ones here. I just have a really nice metal grill of them, which is so sharp you can actually file your nails on them. You get 1300 watts of power. There's also two exciter speakers in the roof of the car and it uses the hollow sills to act as a subwoofer to boost the bass. And then there's a few microphones dotted about the place to pick up unwanted frequencies and cancel them out. So you get a pure, clean, glorious Rolls-Royce sound. This car is fitted with air suspension, like you'd expect from a Rolls-Royce. It also has Rolls's flag bearer system, where cameras here can read the road ahead, and if they spot a bump, they slacken off the suspension, so you don't feel it so much. But on the Ghost, they've gone one better. The car's front suspension has its own separate additional suspension, so it's like it's a double-sprung mattress. It's so super, super comfy. This car's body panels are made out of aluminium, and from the windscreen going up over the roof all the way to the back, you can't find any joints at all to achieve that. Rolls-Royce had to use four expert craftsmen. And what they did was weld by hand all the panels together simultaneously to hide any seams. It's just perfect. The Ghost gets Rolls-Royce's new microenvironment purification system. So the car uses sensors and it can tell if you're driving through an environment that is a bit polluted and then it'll automatically put the car's ventilation system onto recirculation mode. And it diverts the air through a nano fleece filter to remove all those nasty impurities. I'm not sure that it can actually remove coronavirus though. So just to be safe, I think I'll continue wearing this for now. <laughs> These laser headlights can actually illuminate the road up to 600 metres ahead of the car. They can also blank out part of its beam so you don't dazzle oncoming drivers. Speaking of dazzling, there's some LEDs there which sign down when you've got the lights on to illuminate the grill. Though it is a little bit like the automotive equivalent of a vajazzle. As with the Rolls Royces, you have an umbrella in each rear door. Though for the Ghost, you can actually choose your own design for the umbrella and the car's configurator, <laughs> which is quite good fun. Tell you what's not good fun though, if you don't put this umbrella back properly and then you shut the car's door, you could be in for £8,000 worth of damage. That's coming from someone who had a Rolls Royce, made that mistake and then had to pay that money to get it fixed. As with the Phantom and the Cullinan, the Ghost uses Rolls-Royce's 6.75 litre twin-turbo V12 engine. It has 571 horsepower and 850 newton metres of torque, and it drives all four wheels via an eight-speed automatic gearbox. And it's been designed to be super smooth, so you don't feel it when you accelerate. And I'll illustrate just how smooth it is now by using one of the car's champagne flutes filled with water. I'll just start the engine now and you'll see that water should not spill from the glass Ooh, look at that and if i rev it how smooth is that cheers right let's finally see what this rolls royce ghost is like to drive Obviously, I've got to first exit my country manor. Speed humps. Not much of a problem in this. The air suspension just deals with them so well. And I can just cruise down my little driveway. I say little, it's probably about half a mile long. Oh, here's another speed hump. I don't care though, because I'm cushioned by the air suspension yet again. Oh, it's so relaxing, this thing to drive. Though I'm now about to exit and I am faced with a slight problem. It's the fact that this car is so long that I might have to have my nose out on the road in order to be able to see what's coming around the corner, but let's find out. No, I'm okay, because the road's twisting in the right way. If it was going the opposite way, I could have been in trouble. It's so, so quiet in here. I can't feel the road beneath me at all. It's like I'm just floating around in utter tranquility. In fact, I imagine this is what it felt like when I was in the womb. It's as though this car is like your own amniotic sack that you're just bobbing about in all chilled and relaxed. <laughs> oh, it's so lovely. I could definitely get used to this. When I was younger, I was into sports cars that let you feel all the road and everything that was going on. As I've got older, I like the finer things in life. 
I like smoothness. I like relaxation. I like tranquility. And this is delivering it. That was a rattly old van just whizzing past. Hardly noticed it was there. It's so super quiet. I mean, I can whisper and you can hear me. Now I'm coming into town and I'm a little bit worried because this is such a big car, wide and long. How's it gonna cope? Well, actually, it's not difficult to place the front of the car because you do get a good view over the bonnet. And it is nice just seeing the spirit of ecstasy like guiding you down the road. Also, it's got rear wheel steering, a standard. So it should help me get around this corner. Now the turning circle on this car is still 3.4 meters, which is slightly better than a Phantom, which is 3.8 meters. Oh, the steering is, mm, it's just gentle and easy. Now this is the section of the video where I'd normally try and park. Not sure how this is gonna play out. This car does have surround view cameras, so they will help me, I'm obviously parking sensors and stuff. But at the moment I'm caught behind some truck that's loading. Please let me through. I'm in a Rolls Royce, don't you know? Let's see if I can find another parking space a bit further up. Let's see if I can fit in that gap over there. Can I squeeze in my 5.5 meters of length? Ooh. The steering just makes it not as problematic as you might think. I've never found turning a steering wheel when maneuvering quite so enjoyable. Ah, uh, oh look, I'm close. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? I need to employ a bit of mirrorage. I've only gone and got it in the gap. Well, I say a gap, it was sort of a chasm. <laughs> this car only barely fitted and it's really good that I've got these surround view cameras to show me exactly where the car is positioned. Otherwise, I probably would be bumping into other cars, which would be very expensive. Anyway, let's get out of here and try this ghost in another environment. <laughs> What's getting out gonna be like? Ah, uh, uh, leap of faith, can't see anything. Please bear with me, people. I'm doing some road testing right here. Going out my way, golf, come on, out my way. I'm far too important and rich to worry about this. I'm gonna have to go up on the curb. I am gonna have to go up on the curb. That's an instant driving test failure right there. Let's do a U-turn in here. See how many people I can annoy. Oh no, here comes that lorry. Don't know what this Hyundai is doing. He's right up from my bottom. I'm literally causing all the chaos, just all of it. Will people be annoyed at me or will they be cool? We'll find out what the road users think about Rolls-Royce drivers. Is he gonna be happy? Oh, he gave me a little wave, even though I'm still causing maximum chaos. <laughs> right, I think I'm free. <gasps> oh, your blood pressure soon drops again once you start moving and it just soothes you. Now let's see what this ghost is like on a twisty road. Bearing in mind that it does weigh 2.5 tonnes. It has special anti-roll bars which can stiffen up to stop the car leaning in the bends and it does stay relatively flat whilst also maintaining that floaty feel. In fact, you feel like you're flying up the road. It doesn't have a sporty edge to it like a Bentley flying spur and you can watch my full video review of that car by clicking on the pop-out banner up there. But it doesn't topple over either. It doesn't fill out of its depth. And if you need to get a move on, this engine is pretty powerful. I'm gonna floor it. Ooh, a bit of a roar from the exhaust. And it does go all right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it doesn't really hurtle down the road as advance down the road. But yeah, not 60, 4.6 seconds. But it doesn't actually feel that quick because you're so isolated from the sense of speed. One of the things you have to love about Rolls Royces is that they have their own unique way of doing stuff. For instance, you don't have a rev counter, but instead a power reserve gauge. So when you're just tootling along and not really pressing the throttle, you have 100% of power reserve. Floor it and it goes down. <laughs> so it's like the opposite of a rev counter. <laughs> I don't know why that pleases me, but it does. 
Needless to say, this Rolls Royce is brilliant when you get out onto faster roads. It's just so great for soaking up the miles. Seats are super comfy. You can put the massage function on. And one of the things I really like about the massage function is that it just stays on. In other cars, it goes off after a while, but with this, no. If Sir wants to be massaged for his entire journey, then Sir can be jolly well massaged for his entire journey. I'm actually gonna put the cruise control on because it'll just mean that I don't have to worry about setting the pace. The car actually uses a camera and a radar to keep you a safe distance from the car in front, and it'll even work in stop-start traffic. There is one thing that is missing from this, though. It doesn't have that function where it'll automatically steer to keep you between the white lines. It's a bit of a shame. I don't know why it doesn't have that. Maybe it's something to do with the fact that most people who buy these cars probably have a chauffeur, and you do want your chauffeur to at least try to earn his money. So then, what's my final verdict on the new Rolls-Royce Ghost? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon if you can afford it, you should shortlist the Ghost. You see, it's an absolutely sublime car, but the Phantom is just a little bit more luxurious and a touch more exclusive. And if you can afford one of these, you can probably afford a Phantom anyway, so just get that, like right now. Off you go, go buy it, just, just now, bye.